And welcome everybody. My name is Joseph Burke and I am so glad to be here today uh, as a part of the Hemophilia Foundation of Greater Florida. Huge shout out to Fran and all the crew at the Hemophilia Foundation Greater Florida. Hope you guys are doing well up in Winter Park, Florida. I'm here today with uh, probably one of my favorite people right now in, in, in the whole community, bleeding disorder community, Dr. Raj from uh, Gainesville, from uh, University of Florida, Shands at Gainesville. Dr. Raj, how are things in your neck of the woods, my dear? Hey, Joe, thanks for having me. Um, I'm doing well, you know, as, as um, best as we can in, in the environment that we have right now. And I'm really excited to talk to you today. And oh. um, a shout out to everyone out there. That's so awesome. And I want to say a huge shout out right now to all of our friends that's joining us right now over on the hemophilia. I'm looking at the chat and the chat's just blowing up. So thank you guys so much. Please like and share this out on your pages. And let's, uh, let's have a really cool conversation today with Dr. Raj. So uh, let's, let's get this thing. Let's dive right in. You were the medical director uh, at UF uh, for adult, the, the Adult Hemophilia Treatment Center. Now, why did you choose specifically bleeding disorders? Is there a reason behind that? Well, honestly, Joe, I kind of fell into that role initially being the primary physician for patients with bleeding disorders in the hematology adult clinic when my mentor, Dr. Craig Kitchens, retired. And, you know, honestly, we I didn't see a lot of bleeding disorders patients in my medical school training and my residency. And even in fellowship, I, I it was a, a small cohort of patients that I saw because frankly, most of the patients we see are those with clotting disorders. It's just way more common. But in 2010, when I joined the faculty, I started seeing more and more patients with bleeding disorders. And I realized how complicated they can be and how exciting it can be to take care of these patients. And each patient I was seeing in the clinic or in the hospital with a bleeding disorder that may have been a known bleeding disorder or an unknown bleeding disorder, it was like a puzzle I was trying to figure out. And I thought that was just so fascinating trying to crack that case. Um, and I've really just enjoyed um, helping patients with bleeding disorders have a better quality of life, have better control of their bleeding um, symptoms. And so, again, I, I sort of fell into seeing patients with bleeding disorders, but I wouldn't change anything. I, I just love all of my patients with bleeding disorders. They're the best. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned right at the top there, uh, Dr. Kitchens. I've heard so much about him and so, so many great things that, 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 he, that he's done throughout his entire, you know, uh, stay there and at University of Florida. And it's almost like I've known, I've heard so many little stories. I almost know him, but I've never met him. So... That's kind of cool to, to hear the, the stories coming in from him, from other patients as well. Yeah, he's trained so many um, tra trainees, hematologists. His reach um, is really uh, very far. And, you know, I credit a lot of, of how I practice, um, in, especially with bleeding disorders, to what I've learned from him. And I think that's, um, you know, that's a big part of treating patients with bleeding disorders. It's a small community of not only patients, but also physicians. And having that networking with um, those experts in the field, it's so helpful for treating the individual patient sitting right in front of me. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Times a thousand. That's that's in, that's yeah, spot on. So you so you were talking about, you know, you were training under Dr. Kitchens and, and, and there was kind of this you felt an inner urgency to just kind of go towards hematology, oncology. And where did you begin your medical career? So I'm a gator through and through. I've <laughs> lived in Gainesville since I was in seventh grade. Um, I went to the University of Florida for undergrad and I never left. I um, initially did a seven year combined medical school undergrad program. Wow. And then once I finished medical school at UF, I stayed on for my internal medicine residency, which was three years. Mm -hmm. And then I did another three years of hematology and oncology fellowship. I joined the faculty in 2010 and I realized that I wanted to focus my efforts really on, again, patients with non-cancerous hematology disorders. So mostly that's the bleeding and clotting disorders, but it includes a variety of other types of um, hematology disorders like sickle cell disease. And so that's kind of where my mm. career started and, and where it's led me to. And um, I've really enjoyed every minute of it here at the University of Florida. That's so cool. So you were talking about some of, you, you know, your training and your upbringing, and now you're the medical director, one of the med the main medical director is it over hematology. Is that correct? So I am the um, medical director for our hematology clinic Got and it. also in the HTC, the hemophilia treatment center. 
Um, mm -hmm. I lead the adult um, program. Okay, so what are your responsibilities as medical, medical director? Yeah, so for specifically for the HTC program, I oversee our care of patients in the adult HTC. So I make sure to help coordinate the comprehensive care of adult patients with bleeding disorders. And this includes ensuring that patients have a access to an, um, a hematologist 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, and access to a nurse in our hematology clinic, as well as a social worker and some other specialists during business hours. So we really have a great group of hematologists here that I work with, all of whom um, take care of bleeding disorders patients. Mm -hmm. um, I also work very closely with my pediatric counterpart, Dr. Tung Nguyen, who is our hemophilia treatment center director. Mm -hmm. And together we've formed a transition program to help seamlessly um, guide patients from his pediatric clinic over to our adult clinic. I love Dr. Wynn. He is so sweet to talk to. And, you know, we've been planning this whole gator clot trot, and we'll talk about that right at the end as well. But he's, he's, he's such a dynamic individual as well. And what he's doing is just truly astounding at uh, University of Florida. So, you know, bringing it all in perspective, now we, we've got a little bit of your background. We, we know you're a med medical director. I got to ask a really interesting question. What has been the most fascinating case that you have ever had in your career? Wow, that is a tough one because there's so many, right? There's so many interesting cases over the years. You know, I think what comes to mind is um, there was a, a case that we actually published a paper on, uh, on this patient, um, a, a really nice 68-year-old um, lady who had a, um, a disorder, a very rare bleeding disorder um, where she was missing a clotting factor, similar to hemophilia, mm -hmm. um, but, but different. Um, and she also unfortunately developed hepatitis C wow. and um, yeah. she developed the complications of hepatitis C to the point where she needed a liver transplant. Mm -hmm. um, she underwent a liver transplant. And um, of course that's, we had gotten involved at that point because in our bleeding disorders patient doing any surgery, much less a big surgery like a transplant um, can be very difficult and tricky. Right. And so what was really cool about this case is by transplanting her liver and therefore curing the underlying liver disease, she also had her bleeding disorder cured wow. because that particular clotting factor was made in the liver. Wow. So That's that to me was just so cool. Um, you know, I think it's cases like that and the more common cases that really, you know, bring it back to the gratification and why we why we go into this field. You know, you, you, you really bring up a really interesting point in the case that you were talking about. You never really think about the liver is part of the entire process per, for producing factor proteins. And when you get a liver transplant, that uh, thrombrosis, that clotting factor is, is, is regenerated. It's, it's, it's in the new liver. That's uh, so amazing to just wrap your head around science and just how it works. Isn't it cool? It's so cool. So as the medical director, what have you been, uh, what has been some of the great pre, uh, patient medical changes that have occurred in bleeding disorders? What has been some of the advancements that you've seen? Well, you know, our knowledge and advancements in therapies over the last decade has really been explosive. Mm -hmm. um, we've gone from hemophilia patients in, infusing themselves, you know, a couple of times a week with factor. And in some cases now, once every week or once every two weeks or longer, um, so that's been really cool to see the improvement in quality of life for those patients. Um, we've had a whole new class of medications in the hemophilia space. They're called the rebalancing agents or the non-factor therapies. And what we're doing there is rather than simply replacing the missing clotting factor intravenously, we're now actually targeting the, the clotting pathway at different um, angles and helping patients clot um, when they need to. And so it's a way of tweaking um, the way that our body normally clots. You're talking about emicizumab, um, right? That's right. So one of the therapies, which you're very familiar with, Joe, is emicizumab or heme libra, yes. um, which uh, I think a lot of people now know about. It was FDA approved a few years ago. And we've had several patients, um, including you, who've really had a benefit to um, switching to this medication. And, you know, it's not necessarily for everyone, but for those that we have switched, um, they've had tremendous improvement in control of their bleeds, prevention of bleeds, and even quality of life. 
I will say this, and, and you know, I mean, obviously we're, we're, we're not hosted by any pharmaceutical companies. This is just from a patient experience since I started him, Libra, since you put me on it. Uh, January 16th, 2018, I remember that date pretty well, um, I haven't had a bleed. So, that, I mean, that that's, amazing. I mean, this is, I'm a severe hemophiliac type A patient as well. And so I was very prone to spontaneous bleedings, as you know, doctor. And so I would just uh, have these, I would wake up and my knee would be swollen. I'm like, what, what in the world's going on here? But then Hemolibra comes along in these new therapies that are kind of bridging the gap to, uh, gap to factor eight, uh, combining other factor proteins to complete the clotting cascade. It's truly a remarkable way of advancement of therapy and then, you know, down the road, we're going to have gene therapy as well. And so it's just so exciting to see these advancements like you were talking about. Yeah. And, you know, it just warmed my heart when you told me this story the other day about mm, mm. how you were able to take a, a, a vacation with your wife for your anniversary. Yep. And you were able to do something that you maybe would not have been able to do before, right? It was impossible. See, my wife and I vacationed out to uh, Las Vegas. Uh, it was our 10 year wedding anniversary and something I've not really been able to do in my whole life was go hiking because you can just imagine, I mean, just everything that would have to go into a severe hemophiliac to even just be there. Well, him Libra insert that. And now I was, I did like 12.3 miles. It was insane. And, and, and so we went and did the Red Rock Canyons. We hiked and we just had an amazing day, about nine and a half hours out in the desert. It was just awesome. And so I'm like, holy cow, I'm really able to do this now. This is a new lease on life. And I'm, not, I'm speaking from my perspective, but I know a lot of other patients out there who are on these new medications are just kind of rejoicing in the same kind of mindset that I am as well. That's great. Yeah. But, I think that, that it's just we've come a long way and there's still a long way to go. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really impressive how the therapies have started to change people's lives for the better. I couldn't agree more. So, you know, we're, we're talking about a lot of medical stuff. Let's kind of pull it back for a little bit. Now, when you're not working, what are some <laughs> of the things that you like to do for fun? What are some of your interests? Do you have any like hobbies or things you just do to pass the time? Yeah, well, so that's funny. I, I think this year, especially with the pandemic that we're dealing with and all of us having to be cooped up at home and, um, mm -hmm. you know, I thought this is the time, this is the year I'm going to get a hobby. And I've never, you know, really had a hobby in my adult life. I've, I have two young children that keep me on my toes <laughs> and a husband who's a kid at heart. So, you know, all, all my time is usually spent with my family, which I love doing. But this year, um, I said, you know, I'm going to learn how to play the piano. And I've always wanted to uh, learn a musical instrument. I am not musically inclined. And um, so this year, my, my kid's piano teacher, um, she's been very patient with my old brain. And it just shows that you can teach an old brain new tricks. Oh, man. Um, so that's a new thing. Um, and then, of course, you know, with the limitations that we have right now with activity, we like to do a lot of outdoor things. Um, mm -hmm. Being in Florida, we're very lucky that we can do that. Yes. Um, and so we've been taking advantage of the 80 degree weather in October and um, swimming a lot, going on hikes in Gainesville, bike rides. Um, so, you know, a combination of things, but I, I do cherish that time with the family outside of work. I love what you said. Florida is such a great state for outdoor activity. Whether you're canoeing on Crystal River or you're going to the beach or you're just doing something outdoors, hiking a trail, there's just so much to do. And as, as you know, kind of circling back, that's something I've been able to explore the past couple of years as well. So I did something very new that I've not been able to do this year. I went kayaking. Wow. And so I'm like, holy cow, I could do this too. <laughs> well, I think, you know, living here in Florida for, especially for our bleeding disorders patients, um, we, we have the unique ability to encourage patients to go outside, take a walk, mm -hmm. um, you know, go for a, a, a small hike, um, bike ride. You know, there are a lot of low impact exercises that we are fortunate enough to be able to do because of where we live. Gotcha. Well, we're going to round it up. we got a couple more questions and then we're going to let you go and get back to your busy day. But if, in your personal opinion, what are some of the future medical changes that you feel are going to occur in the bleeding disorders community in the next foreseeable future? What are, what are some big advancements you see coming on the horizon? Well, you know, the future is just so bright for our bleeding disorders community. And I think for me and many hemophilia providers and patients, 
the most exciting thing now that's on everybody's mind is gene therapy for mm -hmm. hemophilia patients. And we've been talking about it for a long time, hoping, waiting for gene therapy for so many years, but I think now it's finally becoming a reality. And there've been many well-designed studies in hemophilia A and hemophilia B that have really been showing some remarkable, promising results. But you know there are still many unanswered questions, and I think we need to keep that in mind before we jump full force um, mm -hmm. into gene therapy. Things like you know who's going to be eligible for getting gene therapy? What is the cost going to be, and how are we going to get access to everyone that needs it or wants it? And and then sort of long term, what are the um, long term side effects? What's the long term durability? Is it going to last? And yeah. so, you know, lots of questions still to be answered, but I think we are definitely on the right track and we're sort of in the golden age with regards to therapies for bleeding disorder patients. That's awesome. And so you think about the last five years, just the advancements that we've made in the bleeding disorders community and trajectory where the where it's going, it's so promising for the bleeding disorders yeah. community. I just want to encourage the community to hold on. Good things are coming your way. So let's talk really quick about the Gainesville clot trot. Um, that was uh, uh, actually, uh, what is it? It was made a digital, uh, a virtual clot trot, right? Yes, that's it's... right. Yeah, so the virtual clot trot um, was the ultimate decision. Um, you know, again, we wanted to still engage all of our, our patients, mm -hmm. but we wanted to do it as safely as possible. And, and right now that meant we, we did need to switch to a virtual clot trot, but I am super excited. Mm -hmm. Fran um, at HFGF has got some really great ideas for the clot trot. It's gonna be on December 19th. Yep. Um, so close to the holidays, but hopefully not interfering with um, family holiday activities. And so I'm super excited. I will be there and hopefully all of y'all will too. It's a really cool opportunity, kind of circling back to what you said about trails and hiking and doing things. It gives us an opportunity to virtually go on our own hike and just kind of, you know, log that information. Hey, I did my, I did my, uh, my trek. Here it is, you know, so that's kind of cool. But uh, all right, Dr. Raj, I want to thank you so much for hanging out with us this afternoon and, and just appreciate all that you do up at the University of Florida. You're truly a rock star in a lot of people's eyes. And I uh, just want to thank you for just your, your willingness and just being awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It is truly my pleasure, Joe. Thank you so much. All right. You have a great day and we'll see you soon. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.